chapter 23. And there will be a description here in chapter 23 of the Word of God and what the Word of God uh, is or um, how it is that it works. And <clears throat> we'll go to chapter 23 and verse 29. 23 and verse 29. One of you guys, can you read it out loud for us? It's not my word like a fire. Okay, it's not my word like a fire. So the word of God is like a fire. Keep going. It says, the Lord is like a hammer that breaks a rock. So, so the word of God is like a fire and like a hammer. That is what Jeremiah is referring to. And all of this chapter is in reference to the preachers who churn away from the hammer and the fire of the word of God. Before that, it's talking about prophets whose word is light. And after that, he makes reference to to, to things he say, they, they say sweet things with their mouth, pretending like I said them. Now keep reading, please, uh, uh, after verse 29, verse 30. For these thoughts I am against the prophet, says the Lord, who take my words, everyone from his neighbor. Yeah. See, these are people who do not study the word. They just grab it for some from someone else who did the study. That's what he's talking about. Keep going. See, I am against the prophet, says the Lord, who let their tongue say, he has said. Keep going. See, I am against the prophets of all strength, says the Lord, who gives them out and make my people go out of the way by their deceit and their uncontrolled words. But I did not send them or give them orders, and they will be of no profit to these people, says the Lord. So, so there are a lot of prophets, preachers, missionaries who, who do not help anybody because they don't speak from God. They just speak. In fact, in, in King James, they said they give sweet words. They don't, that does not mean that they are God's word. They're just sweet. And, and he's counterputting that with what we read first. It's not my word like a hammer that breaks the rock or like fire, which is what it says in verse 29. Let's read another passage, if we may. <clears throat> Let's go over to the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, and verse 12. One of you guys read it. You can recite it. You probably remember it because it's one of the easiest or more memorable scriptures in the Bible. 4.12. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So the word of God is like a sword, like a two-edged sword. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and praise you for this morning, Father. We pray that your anointing would be strong upon us for this morning as he brings your word to us in Jesus' name. Amen. The word of God is violent. Spiritually violent, not physically. But the word of God is violent. Silence your phones. The word of God is violent. This is the problem with how the word of God works. We have a whole group of believers who have gotten away from the fire of the word of God. They run from it. And from the sword, the two-edged sword. And from the hammer that breaks the rock. They have found a way to make the word of God all of the other stuff that it is. Sweet as honey. A teaching tool. As waters for the soul. And all of those things are also part of the word of God, but they're only one side of the coin. Jeremiah is standing there as a man who has declared himself, the word of God is like fire on my bones. 
in my mouth. And when he's describing the people who are around him, he says they will be of no profit to the ones who are listening because they refuse to understand the violence of the word. The word of God is not a friend to your flesh or mind. They are expressions of the scriptures that are so offensive that we as preachers and even as good Christians try to dance around it. I heard a preacher say not too long ago, why do we have to get so many qualifications and so many, you know, like, well, the word of God says something about homosexuality. But, and then you go on to say, forgive me and forgive us. Don't apologize for the word of God. You didn't write it. That's right. That's what the word of God says. Say it. Now, don't add your own two cents and your own little hammer. Your conscience, your desire, your personality. But the word of God is clear when it comes down to these subjects. We have a society and a group of people in the church that refuses to understand that there is something about the word of God and its violence toward the flesh. Why is it that it's like a hammer that breaks the rock? Not a hammer by the way, that is, that is used on a nail. But a breaking hammer. I picture it like one of those big ones. You know what I'm saying? Have you seen those? I got one. You walk up to, to a wall and you're going to throw it down. You don't want the little guy that is, you know, like this. You want the big man. Boom. Out. That's what it's saying. The word of God is like a hammer. Now, that works from the outside. The picture that you have to have is... If it's of a rock, a boulder that is in the way, something that is causing weight, something that is crushing, and the word of God comes to work at it and hit it and hit it until it breaks it. The word of God is like a hammer that breaks the rock. Meaning that there are things that get attached to us as believers and as the church that should not be there. And it is the word of God that is going to hit it and hit it until it gets it away from you. It frees you. The word of God is like a sharp two-edged sword. In fact, the Bible says this. When it's talking about the armor. It says that the sword of the spirit. And it says, which is the word of God. It means that the Holy Spirit is the one wielding that word in his mouth, in, in his hand. Why a two-edged sword? Now is the work of the word of God from within. It cuts in. It's trying to get deep into where the stuff is. Some of the things are outside. You got to hammer it on the outside. But there are things that you have to hammer at in the inside. Because there are things that are hidden. And things that only you know. But the Holy Spirit with his word is getting right in there. The hammer works from the outside. The word of God, the sword works from the inside. The word of God is like fire. What is it? Something that purifies. It burns the chaff and everything else and it leaves what needs to be there. It is the picture of separating that which is precious with that which is perishable and taking it all away until you leave that which is from God. When was the last time that you heard uh, the fire of the burning passion of God burning away the stuff that should not be in your life? The two disciples that were walking after the resurrection up to that little village. Amen. And he says, they said this, did not our heart burn when he spoke? They were feeling the burning as Jesus was pounding the word of God. When Peter got up to preach a sermon 
in the book of Acts chapter 2, in the birth of the church, you remember that Peter was speaking. There was a little tongue of fire that was on top of him as, as they were looking at him before. And now that he's speaking, people are convicted by the, by the power of God. And the Bible says that they were so convicted. What are we going to do to be saved? 5,000, 3,000, because the fire of God was upon him. And it was that, that thing that draws you toward him, the passion of the burning of the Holy Spirit. It is a two-edged, sharp sword that face a man like Simon the sorcerer to tell him you are in prison of darkness and if you don't change, you're going to end up in hell. I'm not even talking about the judgment side of the word of God. I'm talking about the breaking of the rock and the molding and the surgery that he does in the heart and the purifying part of his word. Amen. The Bible says out of his eyes is like fire in Revelation. I'm talking about Jesus. And from his mouth, a sword to devour his enemies. See, that's the judgment side of it. But when you stand in his goodness, and you approach him, make sure you know in his hand there is a sword and a hammer and a fire. And he's there to purify and to cut asunder and to break so that he will mold again. There's something beautiful about the two-edged sword. I see it have cut you. It's cut me. I have sat under the conviction of the Lord as something that only I know is being cut by the Lord. Yeah. Doesn't feel right. Doesn't feel good. But I know it's for healing and for changing. Yeah. The two-edged sword. Let me give you a way to be a popular preacher. And a way to be a bad Christian, a weak Christian. Find yourself somebody who will tickle your ear. Find somebody who abandons the sword and the hammer and the fire in favor of the popular, of the cutesy. Now, there is a dark side to, this, to the side that I'm talking about. Not in the Word of God, but there are some people who use the Word of God as a way to put their grievances and their ideas out and to beat up on people. I'm not no. talking about them. I'll get to them, too. But for today, it's this whole aspect of the church that has decided that we have to abandon. And what we're creating then is all kinds of weird things that are not the gospel. A church got really proud and put it on a book of, of an atheist who sat in their church for four years and when they interviewed that, that atheist to say, he said, man, I feel so comfortable here. I will say, I'm not a preacher if an atheist can sit under my preaching for four years and he's comfortable. Now, I'm not saying that I need to make him uncomfortable for free. I'm just saying he's either going to accept the Lord or he's going to feel really, really out of place because the word of God is a two-edged sword. Amen. I'm not saying it's offensive for free, but the word of God is offensive. And let me tell you, to those of you who are preachers, if popularity is what you're looking for and being liked is what you're looking for, you should find something else to do. Be an artist, be a singer, be something else. But being a mouthpiece for the, for the Lord has to be to say what he says, Amen. no matter what the pew says. And then at the same time, you walk up to the Lord and you cry out and you say, God, help me that I don't add my own two cents to the violence of the word. I love it when God gives me a sermon that is sweet. And that I know everybody's going to say, wow, Oscar, we like you today. Yeah. That doesn't happen a whole lot. But when it happens, it's good. I'll give you a secret. Most preachers love that part of the word. 
and most preachers do not like this part of the word. Mm. But it doesn't matter whether I like it or not. Samuel was crying one day, and he, I'll finish here. Samuel was crying one day because he had anointed Saul, the first king, and that guy had gone sideways. And he was crying. He cried all night. And then the Lord comes over to him and he says, stop crying. Grab a horn, fill it with oil. I am sending you off to anoint someone else. But when he went over to speak to Saul in one of those conversations, he was coming from an all night of tears over him. All night long. That's a pastor. And he walks up to that man and he says, the kingdom is taken away from you because of how you have responded to the call of God and how you have lived your life. To that King Saul, that man was mean and evil and ugly. How can he talk to me this way? He did not know that that prophet has cried out all night for him. But when that prophet was told, don't go over there with tears, go over there with my word to him, that prophet had to clear up his eyes. It was swollen, and he walked up to him. Have you ever cried all night? He did, all night long. Walked up to me and he said, Thus saith the Lord. It is that which is dying in the altar of being friendly and of being accepted. And of being cute, of being light. You can walk into many churches today and walk out lighthearted and go to Golden Corral if they have it and feel like, wow, it was good. And when you look at the essence of the Word of God, there was nothing there. The Word of God is a two edged sword. The Word of God is like a hammer that breaks the rock. Yeah. The word of God is like fire that purifies. And you cannot get away from that. God bless you. Amen.